like both our shirts today. I know. Me too. We got good shirts on. Do you know you've actually inspired me? I mean, in every way. I know. I was like, in what ways haven't you? Shorter list. You were like talking about wearing your clothes. And so I'm making more of an effort to do that. Wearing outfits. You're not wearing leggings. I'm not wearing leggings. I know the legging drawer is important to me, but I'd like more bats in there. I'm proud of you. So I'm working on it. Did you notice anything different? Oh, and your hair. I got hair on. Wait, you guys, are we going? Is this okay that we're going? Okay. Okay. Welcome to Disrespectfully. With Katie Maloney. And Dana Kathan. Unapologetically. We're here to do what we want to do. Spilling the tea. Babe, you're going to see the power of women. Like, disrespectfully. Got some new hair. I love it. I love it. I feel super excited about it. She's got length. She's got length and a little more volume. And the thing is, when I have short hair, it's not like when you have short hair. You have more hair than anyone arguably needs. It's gorgeous. It's healthy. But I had gone through a thing where I had told you it's embarrassing to talk about, but I feel like a lot of people will relate to it. Mm. I have lost probably 30% of my hair in the last year and have been having all these issues. So actually I made an appointment next week and I'm getting tested for autoimmune disease. Oh. We're obviously hoping to be well, but I feel like you have to advocate for yourself medically and stuff keeps happening. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And I keep having all these symptoms that are like my hives and and whatever. And someone really nice actually DM'd us and said some of the symptoms I was talking about they had had right before an autoimmune diagnosis. So. Knowledge is power. Yeah, because I mean, that way you can manage it and make life a little easier and be healthier. Well, in the meantime, you better work, bitch, because I'm like, I, you guys are about to be sick of me. I'm feeling so much better and like confident. So, (laughs) I mean, I'm sure some of you are already sick of me, but whatever. And I got my nails did. Ooh. She's a new lady today. What are we working with? Some silver designs and silver dots. I didn't do black. We have so much to get into today. I know. What should we start with? I have a lot of bones to pick today. Ooh, who do you want to pick a bone with? God, who should we start with? I think it's important to talk about the lies that Raquel just told in her podcast. Yeah, somehow I I came across that on my scrolling this morning and I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, she wanted to just call some people out. So for context, Logan, who's (laughs) one of our best friends, yeah, she wanted to call people out on basically naming people that she felt knew about the affair. Like, here we are more than a year later. Yeah. So she basically said a version of what happened did happen. But the way that she is saying it, I believe Logan told me she said that they weren't under a blanket, whatever. Long story short, he they were all hanging out as one does. And they'd always, you know, hang out late at their house. And he walked in to go to the bathroom and Raquel and Tom were under a blanket. In, the not, social, in their social media room, not in the bathroom. In, in a social media room, not in the bathroom. That wasn't weird. Like at the time, now with 2020 con- vision and more context it is, but they literally like, oh, come lay with us and whatever. And he was just like going to the bathroom and didn't think anything of it. She is trying to make it out that they were full on hooking up. Logan saw and looked the other way. That is not what happened. The, the thing I don't like is that she's basically going down like a list of people like this person definitely 100 percent knew this person definitely 100 percent knew this person like probably knew because of like proximity and just like being around. And and then this person like they saw something that probably like maybe look like it's just like, ma'am, unless they like knew 100 percent because what you all were doing was lying, hiding deceiving and anyone that called you out on any kind of like weirdness you guys were like shaming and vehemently like denying like when Lala was like well I thought it was weird that Sandoval stayed behind at this barbecue party and was basically hanging out with you the whole time you guys were like oh what because we're friends we can't hang out because we're friends so no like just because people maybe saw some like strange behavior like it was not confirmed we saw Tom Raquel and Schwartz and Joe at a bar And we thought it was weird behavior for the four of them to all be hanging out together. She didn't say that, oh, well, we definitely knew because we saw them all out together. She didn't claim that as like knowing. So I don't know that we've ever talked about this like to to publicly. So context for that, that when was that? Because it was right before my nose job. So it was like late summer of 2022. It was October. Oh, well, my nose job was on October 5th or something. So it was, yeah, it was probably right. It was the weekend the, before the, that. Yeah, the, the weekend before that. P.S. real quick, mm-hmm. my 
surgeon, Dr. Dugar, today posted something about my surgery <laughs> and gave us a shout out in the caption. It was like, if you haven't listened to Disrespectfully, oh. do so immediately. So thank you, Dr. Dugar. And thanks, Doc. Thanks for the nose. Anyway, we go there, me, you, and Raleigh, and in walk Tom and Tom, Joe and Raquel. At the time, I thought it was more of a shorts and Raquel thing, but like it was Sandoval shorts and Raquel was sitting next to Sandoval and Joe was sitting next to shorts. The second they saw us, they were there for like 20 minutes. Raquel and Joe ran out and then the Toms ran out without saying anything to us. There's a big screen in the bar that shows the parking lot and we saw them like arms flailing, everyone looking panicky. It was super weird. And then Tom and Tom came back and came up to us and we're like, hey, as if they didn't see us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. At that time, not once did it cross my mind, Raquel and Tom are sleeping together. It was it was just a weird incident. But obviously, knowing what we know now, I look back on that and I'm like, oh, well, yeah. OK. But again, people that thought there was weird behavior, like Ali seeing them at the back, they denied that crazily. Lala feeling it was weird that they were hanging out at this barbecue together. They denied that like crazy. So she's not claiming them as like knowing. Because they were denying that. And then even us seeing them, she wasn't like, well, they had to have known something. Like, again, so like, which one is it? These these weird behaviors are you guys knowing they weren't being as reckless and as whatever as they claim to be. So for her trying to like name names and try to prove that as people knowing what they were up to is just it's such BS. Well, and look, people are like, she has the right to tell her story. A- absolutely. She has the right to tell her story as long as that story isn't fiction. Yeah. You are. That is just not how it happened. And it's also like putting the onus on everyone else. Like, oh, you guys knew. I don't understand what you don't understand about the depravity of that entire situation. Maybe some people eventually had suspicions, but everyone was like, there's no way. I so many times said I would have to see them having sex in front of my face when suspicion started in the fall. Like, I just there's no way because it was so unimaginable. So. I don't know. It's not on anyone else. No. Especially when you're denying it constantly. This is, I mean, like, tell your story all you want, but stop trying to shift blame. It, this isn't Goldilocks. This isn't the Billy Goat's Gruff. Yeah. This isn't Green Eggs and Ham. This is real life. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's pretty basement-y. Do you want to talk about the Lala Amazon life? Uh, I mean, I, I didn't want to have to address the live because it just feels like it's just, I don't like to have to play into... The fodder and the gossip and the drama, seeing her kind of mock me and call me stupid and I have amnesia and all this was just felt like a bit unnecessary because if she had watched (laughs) Watch What Happens Live, she saw me acknowledge a falling out that we had, but not really entirely sure if that's what she was talking about. Felt like that was, couldn't have been it. I don't, you know, I just, it just, I don't know. It just... It was a little disappointing. Yeah, well, and also it's just like when someone you love is talking shit about you, no matter if you're, you know, at a weird moment in your relationship, that doesn't feel good. It's not Mm -hmm. fun. There's been a lot of interesting podcast Amazon Live activity this this week because I'm not super happy about something I heard on Juicy Scoop with Sheena. Mm -hmm. A bunch of people tagged me in it and it bummed me out. Like Sheena and I are in a really good place, probably the best place we've ever been. And it really rubbed me the wrong way. She, she, Heather was saying something about, they were talking, so The Valley just premiered and they were talking about Janet. And I think she was asking her, you know, how do you feel about Janet being the show? And she's like, yeah, I know we're like, great. I don't think we'd ever go back in this bad place because they had a monumental falling out years Mm -hmm. ago. And she brought me up and was like, because me and her, Sheena were not in a good place. Janet and her were best, best friends. Janet and I started to become close and she didn't like that. So she was like, yeah. And then she started becoming friends with Dana and she brought something up, which you can go to Juicy Scoop and listen, but it was something from my past involving me and Max and Janet. It was a very long time ago. It was an event that did not even happen. And to me, it was just super out of pocket to bring up. Janet is literally married with a baby and I would leave it to Janet if she wants to publicly talk about why they had a falling out, but it wasn't me. Mm. Yeah, maybe that didn't help that she was friends with someone that Sheena didn't like, but like I do feel like Sheena has a tendency to do that, to go on podcasts and say whatever and kind of ask for forgiveness later. And I just thought it was lame. It was like, 
why are we bringing up things from four or five years ago that are not at all relevant to this conversation? Yeah. I guess I, I will say what it was because it's relevant to my feelings around it. It's me and Max and Janet almost had a threesome. Didn't happen. Sheena, the way that she talked about it at the time, I could understand why she'd have feelings about Janet being involved in that because she used to have something with Max. But the way that she was like policing how a threesome between consenting adults should happen, when it should happen, it was just so weird to me and very upsetting. You can have feelings about your ex and your friend, sure. But like in general, that was a really tender thing for me. And also, I was new to the show. I was told your job on a reality television show is to be honest about your life. Mm -hmm. So I talked about everything because that's what I was told you're supposed to do. And I totally regret talking about that. It's it's <laughs> never sat well with me. And also, it's just the way that she talked about me using that be just because she didn't like me. Whereas if it was someone that she did like, she would not have had a problem with it. Not like take Janet out of it. Like her friend having a threesome with any, she wouldn't have cared. And mm -hmm. I think that there has been a history of her letting people she likes get away with certain behavior. And then if she doesn't like you, she weaponizes it. And that's this is coming from a place of it was disappointing. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of like, oof. Listen, I get it. Unnecessary. I just, I'm like, what, what, am I, what am I doing? What's in the water this week? I don't know. I want to also clear another thing up. Oh, this is the clearing up episode. Yeah, I mean, listen, this is not the episode that we're going to give today, but we're going to give it anyway. On not this past week, but the week before, I guess it was, and then it tied into the valley. And I know people have been talking about it. And again, I don't like this man, but I'm going to just clear up. There was like cheating rumors about Jax brought up. And then everyone in the Vanderpump after show were, were talking about this one particular rumor. And they're like, Jax was in Atlantic City and he took a picture of the promoter. Dad. I'm like, I don't even know what rumor you're talking about. I think someone else brought this rumor up to me. They're like, oh, did you see that one rumor of the Jax in Atlantic City? I'm like, I didn't see that one. That's, a, that's one I didn't see. So they're bringing up this one particular one that I was telling people about. I'm like, funny enough, that isn't the one I even saw. So, okay, like you want to you want to talk about that? Go ahead, knock yourself out. But like, that's not even the one I was talking about. I wasn't even specific about what I was talking about. But you guys just went ahead and made this whole story about it all. But like, I said one thing and then Lala and Sheena piggyback on it both talking about it but it all comes down on me like right. i'm the one sitting at home starting shit and i'm like all i said was like yeah people have been talking about him it's kind of shitty but that's what i see like i'm the only person in the world that saw it if it wasn't for me no one would know about it like please like it's out there just want to clear that up that like whatever they're talking about i never even saw that so apparently they're 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 more aware of things than i am consider it cleared is this street sweeping parking? It's clear. It's clear. Well, I mean, as Brittany would say, it's Mercury and Gatorade. <laughs> Things are weird right now. What's going on with the moon? Did you see the valley? I haven't watched it yet. I haven't either. I, what, what, when I was at Watch What Happens Live, it, like, it's on the screen, but they had the, the volume off and I, would, so I wasn't able to sit there. I was, there was a lot of stuff going on um, while I was there, so I wasn't able to like sit and pay attention to what was Happening. Perhaps we should have a little watch party. No, I mean, the trailer I, looked really good. I'm super happy for them. Congratulations on no, the show. Like, I, it's awesome. I, I know I plan on watch. I just I yeah. haven't had like since I've got back, I've just been trying to play catch up on my life and things. Reunion. Watch what happens live. Sandwich shop. Podcast. Bus. Another bus. Plane. Sleep. Not really. Not enough. No. Do we feel cleared? I feel I feel cleared. I, I feel just want to, you know, so you can hear from me and you. That's why they're here. You know, like just at least our truth. I mean, it's not the truth, but I mean, it's our version. Well, there's three the sides to every story. Exactly. Your truth, their truth, and also your truth because, you know, we're right. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> so I have a new Bev. The Bevy Queen. Mm -hmm. Tell me everything. It's called Bubbly Burst. And I brought every single flavor. Yeah, you <laughs> so did. So which one do you want? I got triple berry, peach mango, cherry lemonade, pineapple tangerine. Watermelon line and Tropical Punch. What's your fave? Well, the Bubbly Burst flavors are all insanely good. But I mean, I don't know. I crave a different flavor depending on what I'm doing. When I watch shows at night, I might do like a glass of watermelon lime and like a wine glass over ice. And then when I need a midday pick-me-up, I might do like a cherry lemonade or peach mango. But I think for my new podcast beverage, I'm going to do the Tropical Punch. <gasps> Sounds oh, bubbly. Effervescent. Oh, yeah. I'm a berry gal. 
So can I have the triple berry? Mm-hmm. We'll do some ASMR. <laughs> yes. Here's all. Meow. This is mm. next level. What is it? It's bubbly burst. And it's a new sparkling water beverage that flips the script on boring with a burst of bold brew flavors, obviously refreshing bubbles and 1% juice. I feel like I was just talking about this, how I'm really conscious of the amount of sugar in drinks. And it looks like there's zero added sugar. And it has antioxidants mm. and immune support with vitamins E and zinc, which you and I can both use, apparently, since we've been to the hospital recently. <laughs> and only five to ten calories. The best part is that it's bursting with flavor. Love that it gives me the little burst I need. And it makes any activity like really fun. It's like a party in my mouth and everyone's invited. I love how colorful the bottles are too. They're so cute. They make me happy. It's bursting. It's colorful. It's energetic. There's a little saying at the top of each cap. Totally. What does your say? It says fizz on. Mine says drink it all in. Very That's like really uplifting. Definitely try this new bubbly burst. Bubbly burst is a flavorful new sparkling water beverage from the makers of bubbly. Honestly, I'm going to try the watermelon lime too delicious it's bursting with fruit flavor and again the no sugar added is just really what i need to be all smiles we love her ag1 i first gave ag1 a try because i was tired of taking so many supplements every day and i just wanted a single solution to support my entire body with just one delicious scoop of ag1 i'm supporting my gut health immune and brain health i have felt so much more energized throughout the day since implementing AG1 into my daily routine. With AG1, I know I'm covering my bases with high quality ingredients like pre and probiotics for digestive support, vitamin C and zinc for immune support and folate, magnesium and ashwagandha for stress support, which I need. Yeah, not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also incredibly simple. Just one scoop once a day. You can mix it in water or your smoothie, which is what I personally do. And I love that it actually tastes good because in addition to not taking a thousand supplements, mm -hmm. you're not going to eat a green powder that tastes the way it looks. Yeah. Not the case here. I've been telling everyone about it and I just love how energetic I've been feeling. That's true. It does taste really good. I just like to put on ice. That's my preferred method. Sheet. I actually look forward to it every morning. AG1 is a supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. If there's one product I recommend to elevate your health, it's definitely AG1. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash disrespectfully. That's drinkag1.com slash disrespectfully. Check it out. So we took a little trip down memory lane and mm -hmm. we decided to watch some questionably iconic movies. Uh? Completely questionable. I apparently, I don't trust my memory as a child now. I feel completely different. You feel betrayed? I feel betrayed by glitter. <laughs> you I've been sure feel betrayed by glitter. I've been personally victimized by so, glitter. Dana had never seen burlesque. So I was like, girl, you got to watch burlesque, obviously. And then from there, she's like, now you got to watch glitter. And then we ended it with a crescendo of hustle and flow. So mm -hmm. all these movies took place during a really iconic era known mm -hmm. as the early 2000s. Mm. Um, but they all, <laughs> some have held up and some have not. Uh huh. What do we start with? The good, the bad, or the ugly? <laughs> I, let's start with burlesque because that was. Okay, let's we'll let's just go PEMDAS. Let's go order of operation. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I really love burlesque. This is one of the movies I can turn on anytime. I think it's great. The cast is stacked. We got Christina Aguilera, Stanley Tucci, daddiest uh, of them all. He's on our daddy list now. I can't believe we forgot him. Daddy list. Yeah. Um. He could. He could be so fine. Just and then also play. The greatest gay of them all. Like, talk about range. No, him and his gnocchi get on the daddy list. Oh, no. I want him to roll me in a little ball mm. of dough. And then Cher. And then the guy from Twilight. He had the, the blonde, the blonde wig. He was the mean one in the first Twilight. Yeah, the one that chases Bella mm -hmm. down. Um, and he wears eyeliner. Even on his, like, days off, he just casually likes eyeliner, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I'm trying to interpret what the movie's goal was with all his guy liner. They loved it. He had to play the really like broody, moody, you know, musician bartender who like, you know, couldn't quite get his shit in order. But then, you know, 
Christina Aguilera comes into his world and suddenly he just wants to like, I don't know. Be that guy. Be that He's guy. He's also engaged. Extremely and he has a fiance who's like in New York doing her thing. Um, he's also working on music that no one can hear. Like, <laughs> he's that guy. Mysterious. So the cast is stacked. Cher looks incredible. I looked up, I think she was like 67 at the time of that. I just, she is like best surgeons. I love her. She's just iconic. Okay, I know you love this movie and it's an easy, like for me, what you're describing is like The Devil Wears Prada. Whenever it's on, I watch it, like certain movies like that. Mm -hmm. It was so corny. I just, I could not believe. But that, like, but that is the point. Like, you mm. know, Christina Aguilera, she's not exactly like Oscar level actress you know the point was the point was like the music and the the show and, and all that like my cringe she, threshold she thought is she low. ate with every line oh my god she was like what'd she say to that what's her name uh kristen bell she was like you look great you'd never know you were a man and it was like <laughs> yeah that is offensive first of all but second of all just like silly goosery you she's like ate left no crump ma'am I that know. didn't do what there's you thought so it did. There's so many lines. And when she, oh, and when she tells that woman she loves her, she, she goes, oh my God, she's like, I love you. She goes, she goes Christian Louboutin. I'm like, ma'am, did you just <laughs> And then when he gives an her episode? the shoes, she wears them with like every outfit. And they're like the most like gaudy 2010, shoes. 2010, <laughs> like the classic. And what, yeah, she just wears them like she wears them to get the mail with the robe in the morning. It's like, like, we get it. You have a pair of lubes. So encrusted with rhinestones and just bedazzlement, peak toed platform, just like ooh. old Marcus, uh, old me, and he's Grey's Anatomy guy. Eric Dane, ugh, daddy, daddy list, daddy list. Just yeah, just the greatest cast of people. We need to make an Excel spreadsheet, mm. Leia, of our but, daddies. FYI, you know, we need to like keep track of them. She's just like this sort of small town girl, big dreams, comes to LA, works at the a gross <laughs> burlesque club, but like. Gets like quasi pseudo fame. <laughs> she also starts working there. Problematic. She's filled out no paperwork. She just the first night. She's like one night. I mean, it's very coyote ugly coded, even with the like oh, bar, yeah. the, you know, bartender, musician, boyfriend and whatever. But also back in the old me would be like, yes, choose love. Choose the bartender. Current day me would be like, girl, he the shoes get just pick him like you silly, silly goose. Also, sprinkle, sprinkle. Red flags. He has a fiance. Oh, that whole thing is a mess. What are you doing? In walks Diana Argon, fresh off the glee set. Diana Argon, just pissed as all hell. I am the fiance. I am the fiance. Their fight too. She's being Christina's being like mean. Like I'm sorry, you you're in the wrong. Yes, they just broke up technically, or like the fiance saying they hadn't broken up. But I don't know who to believe. But like maybe you should just be nicer. Like maybe just be like, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna leave. I think well she she does eventually, does, she but just, she's like. She bolts. I don't remember her like arguing. I think she just is kind of like, dude, what the fuck? I would, I would probably be the same way. I'd be pissed a little bit too. At him. She was pissed at him. I don't think she was pissed at the girl. I don't know. Well, I don't I, know. I thought it was weird. If some screeching woman came in, I would be like, listen, first of all, he is the problem. Don't be yelling at me, ma'am. This guy needs all the vitriol. Fuck both of you. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. I mean, that's true. My, can I tell you my favorite part of the movie? Yeah. The montage where she's, I fucking love a movie montage Ooh, yeah, where she's like getting good at it and you're just you're seeing the workup happening. Yeah. And then it leads up to burlesque, the performance of all performances, the performance kind of off topic. But what are the best movie montages in your opinion? OK, I have a list. OK. One of the most iconic is Pretty Woman. Correct. Cannot go wrong with that. Devil Wears Prada with all of her fits, you know, cross the Chanel walk, boots. Walk. She, yeah. Are those the. Chanel boots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. When she's just like walking through the traffic and it's just reveals one like fit after the next. And it's like hits, 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 hits. I love that. Um, Clueless. I want to be a supermodel. It's always a song too. The song yeah. choice like really makes it. Right. Like I love like a makeover or like fashion montage, which also like Sex in the City has a, when she's cleaning out her closet and they're yes. like, keep it, toss it. I love that. Like, I want to do that one day. A hundred percent. My clothes weren't just so like, ugh, anyway. Like, it's not, it's not worthy, montage worthy, my clothes that I need to get rid of. It's you, just I told like, you about the bats. I mean, I don't even know what I own. <laughs> Mine is just like, me, like me, me, me. me and the dust bunnies. Like, what do I do with this guys? They're like, keep it. Yeah. Please. Toss it. 
<laughs> Laszlo through her cone. She's like, because we were just talking about Coyote Ugly. Truly one of my favorites. When she's mm. getting good, she's like tossing the beer bottles and getting all good and then ah. working up to getting over her stage fright to slettily sing her song. And I say that with endearment, obviously. I'm like, that is iconic when she finally gets the bottles and she just can do the shots and waste all the alcohol the way they <laughs> pour those shots is so reckless. I know, I love that. It's like yeah. the Neutrogena commercials in when the 2000s when they just the like, who is ever in the history, what, what <laughs> barn animal washes their fucking face like that? Not I, I. Well, I feel like, by not on purpose, but whenever I wash my face in a sink, it's like, it's just, it's flood. And that's me trying not to make a mess, but that chaos. Yeah, no, I feel like I just should anyway do that. Can I go kind of left here? Yeah. Because I feel like this is not going to be expected because you're talking about fashion and love and shit. And yeah, that's great. Gone Girl. Okay. I, remind me because it's, it's a movie that I've seen like maybe two times, but like haven't, it's been since back then. What is the montage in that? It's in my DNA because I've also read that book several times. Oh. It's when they flip the script. We learn that because it's the whole first half of the movie you think oh. you think she's been kidnapped and whatever and then it should, she's like oh actually no. You think you're going to fucking ruin my life and get away with it? No, no. You're playing checkers. I'm playing checkers. I love a reveal montage. A re and she's and the, it's everything she says about the the cool girl. Cool girl's game. Cool girl eats hot dog. Well, that's for everyone. But I'm just saying, like, she's like talking about this, you know, everyone knows the cool girl. Everyone. Yeah. And at certain points in your life, it's possible you were trying to be a cool girl. But she's basically like, no, I'm going to actually get you arrested for murder. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was cool. I love, yeah, a good like reveal montage when like when someone starts putting the pieces together and it's like all like the, the you know, they're like the aha montages. You're like, yes, yes. In, in the same vein, I'm going to laugh because J-Lo Everything I've been seeing about her movie I've, is against my will on TikTok. I just keep seeing like, have you seen these videos? No. It's very unhinged, but very J-Lo. She like, you haven't seen the video of her with her? Like, she's like, sometimes she's at the gym and she's like, I like to take my hair out like this. Reminds me when I'm 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block. And it basically a bunch of people have put together clips of her movie that look like a mockumentary. It's very funny, mm -hmm. but enough. Fantastic oh, movie. when she's... She Learning how to kick some ass. Early 2000s, getting ready to also murder her husband, but just, yeah, deserves that. Yeah. He's like a really bad guy. Like a Rocky fight scene. Uh-huh. Like, well, that movie too. So Rocky. Yeah. But j -Lo, I mean, going back to like the, the I just because just I want to mention these. Yeah. Take well, this is one. Okay. Warm Bodies is like. like You love that movie. I know. I fucking love it. Like Nicholas Holt is so hot, but I, you know. Um, but it's kind of reminds me, it's very a la homage, whatever, to Clueless. But it's like they're kind of like making fun of themselves. Like she at one point plays Pretty Woman, too. Yeah. You know, but I love that when he's in the shower and the water's like running over him and he's like starting to like become mm -hmm. like human and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I'm like, oof, hello. Um, and then also in Marie Antoinette, the Sofia Coppola one. When they Love. do the champagne waterfall and they have all like the jewels and the shoes and the all the hair. It's the like food, the opulence. The op oh the opulence. And then the last one I have on here is the opening like sequence um scene for Midnight in Paris. And they're just showing all like images and flat of scenes of Paris. Mm -hmm. Oh, love i just saw that for the first time like six months ago i know i've missed out on all these great if someone watches as many movies as me i've missed out on a million so yeah do you have any other ones my last one because i think it's the one to end all ones <laughs> legally blonde oh S the bunny costume <laughs> we're at the mac store i mean set it ugh. off she okay and also christina should have taken some notes because she actually ate when she was like but when i dress up as a frigid bitch i try not to look so constipated <laughs> Read of the century. Yeah, she, Elle Woods really set it off after that. She was ready to get her studious on. <laughs> yeah, she was. And then, what? Like, it's hard? So we have burlesque. We had different feelings about it. So I basically was like, I had seen Glitter growing up and I thought it was amazing. Like, great movie. Whatever. <laughs> so we switched to Glitter. <laughs> I'm horrified. I have, I have never watched a movie back years after I had seen it. And me and my sister both loved that movie. It is as bad as, let's look up the... Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten. Okay, or. I think it could have stood a chance, but the they really shit the bed with that casting. Dice. The the lead guy like is just so not believable in that character. It was so cringe. I just don't believe him like getting with Mariah. Like no 
shot. This guy it was just so corny. This like just this like the corniest white dude on the planet playing this DJ. His black scent was embarrassing. So problematic. P- problematic as all get out. But like just I, I don't have a problem with like movies having their like movie magic. Like you're like this, this apartment he lives in. I'm like I can look past that. They never gonna like portray the real New York back in the day with like this man true- lives in a, an apartment with stairs. It was the coolest loft I've ever seen. I, the most gorgeous, like, thing. Like, you think Lady Gaga would live there. I'm like, you're can a DJ on the weekend. Can we talk about the, the worst part of the movie? Yes. Though? When they go on, like, their date, and then he takes her back to the place, and he's trying to, like, seduce her. And he, he's also, like, a musician. He has a xylophone <laughs> the size of a fucking baby elephant. Or, a, dare, dare I say, an actual yeah. elephant. But... No, but also he had the piano. Like if a guy's going to tickle some keys, he can tickle anything on me. That would like turn me like I love a talented musician type. That's no <laughs> secret. Yeah, you do. Whatever. But if the man is going to like just completely bypass that and pull out the little, what do they call them? Is Mallets. I'm, oh. And start is, banging on a xylophone. It's, it's giving recorder. Dwight Shute pulls out his recorder and I'm like, the thing is, he went right for it and he's like, this is the close, but it's like, hey, listen to this. Bing, bing, bong, bong. <laughs> it's like he like rips off the Fisher Price tag on it and he's like, no, no, this is a grand, this is a grand xylophone next to my like grand piano. One around the merry go round or something. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was like the, the whatever equivalent of Mary had a little lamb on the xylophone would be. <laughs> and she's looking at him like, take me now. Do you know what the most disturbing part is? It worked. They had sex immediately. I mean, of all the things I could buy not being completely believable because it's like a movie. This was, I, I thought about it through the whole movie. It was so shocking. Like <laughs> I, we, we were cackling about this and I hope this is funny because we were, I, at the time we were, it was so funny. We were like, close your eyes, everyone. Imagine you go on a date with it already <laughs> just such mid dude who like says like, yo girl, that guy who's got frosted tip a white man who has a giant f- chain that looks like he got it out of a vending machine it says <laughs> dice he's got a nickname a nickname and he's just so cringe and he takes you back to his place he's like listen to this baby and starts playing on a xylophone are you fucking that dude the answer is no immediately no okay. immediately no but you're Mariah Carey and you're... I don't know, man. It was so disturbing. And her commitment to a side pony throughout, yeah. it's in the 80s. But like, that's I, that's like a very... Can someone who like, I was born in 86. I don't really have a ton of like memories of what the <laughs> fashions were. I knew maybe like toddlers were wearing ponies, side ponies like that. Were women who were like in their, you know, 20s, rocking side ponies on the regular. Can somebody confirm or deny that for us? Yeah, truly. Well, and just so you know, it has a 6% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is six too many. <laughs> the, and, oh, the most disturbing part of the film for me, and it, I'm sorry before spoiling any of these movies, like it's been a, two decades. She, at the end of the movie, she has like this long lost mom. Her mom gives her up because she's a drug addict and that's kind of her origin story. And at the end of the movie, she finds a letter from Dice because they get in a big explosive fight. I'm pretty sure he hits her. Like, it's not funny. It's, like, you should not be with this person. And he, like, writes a letter and Dice gets shot and it's very dramatic and he dies. So she finds... Right before her, like, big performance. Her Madison Square Garden performance. Right. And she comes out, you know, she's in a dress she cannot walk in because it's so tight to the seam. She's, like, doing this, like, weird shimmy. The most Mariah Carey coded thing ever. <laughs> ever. She finds this letter and he's like, hey, BT Dub, I found your mom. And this is where she lives. She wants to meet you. So she gets in a limo and she goes straight from Madison Square Garden to what can only be described as Pennsylvania. We don't know where the fuck this West is. West Virginia. She pulls up in her limo. They put her on the world's most gravelly fucking. <laughs> <laughs> she already cannot walk in this dress and her mom walks out and immediately they run to each other and hug. And I'm like, you didn't even change. In, you didn't get in your legging drawer. You didn't like. <laughs> You didn't do anything to make yourself more comfortable. You also are just like sneak attacking this woman. Like, I don't know. It was so weird. I'm really sorry I put you through that. Just cross it off the list. I hope we can recover. Those are two hours of our life. We'll never get back. I, you know, I'm just for the xylophone scene alone. It was kind of worth it because like that was 
That shit was good. Yeah, I mean, there were there were guttural belly laughs, so I don't regret that. But yeah, I will not be, ever be watching Glitter again. Um, Padma Lakshmi was in it. Oh my god, I was gonna say, I was like, who is? Because I, I thought it was her, but I'm like, I didn't know she acted. She hosts. Well, upon like researching her or you know taking a peek over her IMDb, that would appear to be her only actual like true acting role. I think there was like maybe some other like little tiny bits, but like that seems to be like the the big thing. Uh, aside from like playing herself and doing Top Chef for like over a decade. She looks the same. She's, She's hot. stunning. 10 out of 10. <laughs> She's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But other yeah. than that, the brat was good. The brat was in it. The brat was amazing. <laughs> we loved the brat. She was, you know, there were little and moments, also, but. Terrence Howard was in it. Oh, and how did we, we, how did we forget to mention the real saving grace of the entire movie? Eric Bonet. <gasps> the finest man. The, actually, oh the my only, god! Only other redeeming part of the movie was when Eric Benet bites his lip. I googled Done. him. Looks the same. I almost slid in his DMs. He's in a relationship. I googled him and googled mm-hmm. his height. Well, I didn't even tell you I was doing this while we're in the movie because <laughs> I was you like googled. But you didn't tell me that you were googling the height and that you were going to slide into. His yeah, DM. I went. Well, and then I real. I think he's in a he's in a long term relationship or married. So I was like, damn it. But that man, daddy list. Get on the daddy list. Age like a fine wine. He's so hot. My God. Quick pivot because this is driving me insane. I guarantee you I would see this. There's a trend on TikTok. Who's your all's craziest? Hear me out. And then you swipe and it's a picture of someone. So it's like someone that isn't traditionally hot that like people are like, hear me out. Just, just Larry it would David. be a Larry David. Okay. Yes. So the, the trend is basically saying like, who's your Larry David? Okay. I have made a list in my phone of ones that I've seen because I'm disgusted. None of these are crazy. Okay. I think Eric Benet, I could oh. see like Eric Benet, be, which is no, tr- wait till the list. Here is an, here's some examples. <sighs> what? Tony Soprano. Jason Bateman. Barack Obama. This one is going to rattle you to your core. Seth Rogen. Vince Vaughn. The security guard from Lilo and Stitch, which that one, I, it's funny for the trend, but I'm like, oh yeah, I get it. But the rest of it, I'm like, who the fuck looks at Barack Obama and is like, you'd have to just listen to me, Seth Rogen, and they use his GQ spread where he's in like, it just like smoking at the beach and shit. And I'm like, you, girls, this is not groundbreaking florals for spring. We got some Delulu people out there thinking like, please, Seth if Rogen. This is, if this is like your like unconvinced, like people- Jason Bateman, drop trow and take a bow. Are you kidding me? No, I know. Like, I'm just, I'm confused. Anyway, so I could see Eric Benet being in that which would be like so no upsetting no fucking <sighs> way he's he's that man is uh-uh no way based on the trend i'm saying like of these people being delusional no, i understand he's- those people because it's like yeah like i don't like those men are they're kind of like a little more on the average joe end of things relatively speaking okay they're not like leos but eric Monet is a fine man okay no no, I don't think I don't think so. He also really dropped off after he cheated on Halle Berry, but that's probably yeah. because he cheated on Halle Berry. Well, really yeah. wild stuff. So anyway, we watched Hustle and Flow because Terrence Howard, and then you came up with that idea. Yeah, Hustle and Flow, not quite. Well, a little more on the the edgier <laughs> side, but you know, Terrence now would take the sort of position of <laughs> the Christina <laughs> or the Mariah, where he's. You know, a plays a pimp, but you know he's got dreams too. Stacked cast in that as well. Yes, we got Terrence Howard, Luda, Ludacris, Taryn Manning, uh, Taraji P, and who else? She's so I cannot believe how like young she was, and it like took me a minute to rush. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, no, she's. Yeah. Is that really her singing? Do you think? I think so. I mean, it's incredible. You can tell it's her singing. It's incredible. It's so good. It's good. There's some very difficult things to watch in it. Yeah, I mean, you're watching. He's a pimp, so you're watching him <sighs> Devast- do, do that. <laughs> Devastating. The ending was psychotic. It was like a good movie. The ending is some real silly goose behavior. Wait, can we please discuss Taryn Manning? Bowling Branch. Katie and I are so excited to announce that we have finally found a solution to our sleep problems. And we all know me and Katie have a lot of sleep problems. We tried noise machines. Well, Dana loves her noise machine. I do. Meditation, counting sheep, and nothing was working until we found Bowling Branch. Bowling Branch makes the softest, most breathable bedding you'll ever feel. 
And right now you can take 20% off everything during their best sale of the entire season. That's 20% off their buttery soft sheets, airy blankets, cloud-like duvets, and so much more. They're made with the highest quality 100% organic cotton and are yours to try with their 30-night worry-free guarantee. And it's just in time for spring. I don't know about you, but I love a good spring cleaning and nothing feels better than some fresh bedding. A bed is like a really important thing for me. I've spent years and lots of money really perfecting a beautiful bed situation. I know you're the same way too when it comes to just like the right mattress, feather topper, pillows. But you know, like, and sheets are like really a huge part of that, which is why these sheets from Bowling Ranch I love so much. Especially like cotton sheets too, because they are like super breathable, especially in the summertime. It's very necessary. For me, the sheets are the most important part. Bowling Branch is so soft. I absolutely adore the sheets. Yeah, I mean, it has over 11,000 reviews. So I think other people like it too. Sleep better with the softest, most breathable bedding from Bowling Branch during their best sale of the entire season. Get 20% off your order when you use promo code disrespectfully at BowlingBranch.com. That's Bowling Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. Promo code disrespectfully. Exclusions apply. See site for details. You want to know something? Yeah. I've been trying to eat a bit better these days, and I have been finding it super easy to stay consistent with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. I love those meals. Mm -hmm. They are fresh, never frozen, ready to eat. And I've not met one that I didn't like. I love getting my pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to my door. Is there anything more convenient? What I love is that you'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie and more. And not to mention over 60 nutrition packed add-ons that can make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. Hunger will suddenly just hit me out of nowhere mm -hmm. and no one likes me hangry. That's why I love their two minute meals so I can just fuel up fast with restaurant quality meals. Like I'm trying so hard to stay away from fast food and this is making it possible. Same, when I'm hungry, feed me. I'm also a big snacker and I love eating in between the meals. So I love their snacks and smoothies and all the like midday bites. There's nothing worse than coming home after a long day and opening your fridge and trying to decide what to make for dinner. My fridge lately, bats have been like you open it up, the bats come out. I love going home knowing that I have a factor meal ready for me as soon as I walk in the door and there's no prep and no cleanup, which I love. I love that it's less expensive than takeout. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing six to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash disrespectfully 50 and use code disrespectfully 50 to get 50% off. That's code disrespectfully 50 at factormeals.com slash disrespectfully 50 to get 50% off. Taryn Manning is, it's so sad. Like, I don't know what's going on with her, but she seems not well. But I want to know your thoughts specifically on the episode that she did with Whitney Cummings podcast. On the podcast, she says she has been offered the golden juice. Several times. Is this some Illuminati yeah. type thing? Oh, gosh. She talks about, it, it reminds me of the death becomes her potion. Like, that's what it's giving. And I'm like, where? Is it oh. Erwan? I want it. <laughs> They're so hot. She's so wild and out there. But part of me thinks, like, maybe she's not cra as crazy as everyone thinks. But yeah, she basically says, like, Hollywood Illuminati is real. People are drinking the golden juice. I'm not much of a conspiracy theory person. But she's like, I don't know, the way she says it, I was like, I mean, mm. I don't think Cat Williams alluded to that exact thing, but he definitely kind of, kind of sort of did. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did too. So I don't know. She was just so out there. Like after she had that whole, there's something about a car accident and she was like with a married guy and she put him on blast for some, some bum play that he liked. <laughs> yeah. And she's also a champ because what she, unspeakable, I would never, but I mean, good for her. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought it was super interesting, but I guess you'd have to see the podcast. I'm gonna have to check this out because I, I need a little more info. Yeah, well, I mean, it reminds me of Amanda Bynes who, it makes me so sad, like, seeing her TikToks, like, she, I just, I just don't, I wish I understood what happened and did you watch Quiet on Set? I watched the first two episodes but, holy hell. If anyone has not seen this or doesn't know what it is, it's on, I think, Max, Max and Discovery Plus. And it's discussing Ugh. Uh, Nickelodeon and the producer, what's his name? Uh, Dan Schneider. 
who basically created, you know, and was producer and writer for all that and the Amanda Bynes show and Drake and Josh. And it is beyond disturbing, especially like growing up watching Nickelodeon and being so young and not knowing what was going on and and what these kids went through. It's very disturbing. So they... Even in the vi- the first like 10 minutes, they show a bunch of clips of things that were actually aired, things we consumed and we watch. I audibly gasped <sighs> and sat up and I could not believe. The Ariana Grande thing with a potato, like she's holding a potato with two hands being like, I wonder if you can get juice out of potato. And the way she's holding the potato with her two hands and squeezing it is so inappropriate. And even and like she's her laying voice. back on the bed and squirting water on her face in a very subjective, subjective, like sexual way is just like, and then she's putting her foot in her mouth and they're like, people are watching these clips. They're like, did they air this? Yeah. That's what I was going to say. So the, one of the guys, I was like, I'm with you on this. Like I literally, and they're like, yeah, it aired. She's like a 13 year old girl at that time too. Yeah. Pouring water. She's like, I'm so thirsty. And there was tons, the the sexual innuendos throughout for all of the shows. Mm -hmm. Obviously we were kids and most of us were latchy kids. So I I don't know, like maybe your parents weren't paying as much attention. Like Nickelodeon was definitely me and my sister's babysitter a lot of times growing yeah. up. Yeah. So the sexual innuendos, like they definitely did like cum shot things. Like it was, I mean, it was- On Zoe 101. Zoe 101 that, yeah, on Jamie Lynn Spears and like mm-hmm. a couple, no, there was like a couple other ones too. And it was just like so dark and hearing and the power imbalance, which we obviously have discussed before. It's just like, when you're a child, you're already afraid of adults and are inherently told to be obedient. And then a lot of these kids are hoping to help their families. So they look at it as like they're a lifeline to their family having financial stability. So there's just so many things. Yeah. And the way he openly played favorites. Uh, so they wanted to be liked. They wanted to be the favorite. They wanted, you know, and they saw these kids get more opportunities, you know, when they were liked. When kids are so young and impressionable like that, I mean, it's really manipulative. The amount of footage that they actually have of Amanda Bynes and him touching each other in the broad... And there's adults everywhere. And she's 13-year-old little girl. She had a Twitter that was apparently not verified, but it was, I don't know, look on Reddit. Allegedly, it was her. And she said on it that she got pregnant by him and had an abortion when she was 13. I believe it. She They talk at length about how he would take her in back offices to talk about scripts and stuff. So also, like, where the fuck were her p- parents? And, like, there is accountability on... So one of the parents of one of the little girls who was assaulted by uh, PA, she was like, well, I thought about calling the police, but then I didn't. And it was like, you thought about it? Excuse me? Yeah. But instead, we just left the industry. It's like, well, I'm sure she's well-adjusted now. Like, So I finished the series. And I, I this isn't, like, a spoiler or giving anything away because it was in the trailers, like Drake Bell comes to tell his story. So in addition to this really asinine producer showrunner, so his name was Brian Peck and he was like a vocal coach among other things. And Drake Bell's dad was really close with him and is originally the one who was helping him with his acting career. And then slowly Brian Peck weaseled his way in, made him having a falling out. So the mom then kind of took everything over and the dad told the mom, do not ever let Brian be alone with Drake. And fully had prevented that. And so Brian, you know, used, knew that he had to get rid of the dad. The second he gets rid of him, he starts spending a ton of alone time with Brian and Brian's bringing him to Disneyland and all this stuff is happening. And then he started sleeping over at his house because they lived in Orange County. And so the mom let Brian take him to auditions and then sleep over because it was easier than bringing him back to Orange County. Oh, no. So on one of those occasions, he was assaulted. As again, he's a child. He's like 14 or 15. He basically was worried about his career and the implications of calling this guy out. But also he wanted to tell his mom, but felt confused. It's obviously not on him, but he knew if he said like, I can't keep going. I don't want to stay at Brian's anymore. The mom would be like, why is that? So he kept doing it and he was assaulted for years. Finally, he tells his mom years into this, like, and he said it was, I mean, in the court documents, they read some of it. It's horrifying what happened to him. And basically the mom calls the police right away. They get him on tape confessing to all the crimes and he goes to jail for 16 months he's all these court records are sealed which is why it he never until he just came out and drake bell said like this is i was the kid that this happened to luckily they were able to seal everything but he said 
the day of the court hearing, the amount of people in the room that were on Brian's side wrote letters for him. James Marsden. There were the people from that other show, Boy. Uh... Oh, several of the cast members from Boy Meets World, Sean and Eric. I don't know their real names. The things that people were writing in these letters, they were saying, I can't imagine Brian doing this unless he was severely tempted beyond control. It's a child. Oh, I have the list. Go ahead. Okay, so it's Ron Melendez, Alan Thick, James Marsden, Ryder Strong, Will Friedel, Bell's former The Amanda Show co-star, Taryn Killam. I mean, there's more, but those are like... Ooh. It's so... To me, that's like one of the worst. And beyond the assault, the betrayal of those people. It's a child. What are you talking mm-hmm. about? And the guys from Boys Meets World, I think they have a podcast and they came out saying that they didn't know that like the extent of it and they didn't mm-hmm. think that the letters would ever like see the light of day that they would be sealed okay well yeah to side with a monster i'm sure you hoped that they were sealed but i mean it's it's possible that some of these people were manipulated they had one other gal they said that same thing on on the episode they said she's since been contacted and she said she did not know what had happened but i don't know if you're there for the trial you should probably believe the child but oh it's so terrible anyway the whole thing is just so dark but yeah amanda Bynes. obviously i think she had some underlying issues but i there's no doubt in my mind the way that that contributed to her not being well i mean it fully makes sense at this point like and it's there's a scene in the amanda show of her and dan schneider yeah, in a hot tub together yeah it w- that's in the show and they're and she's and he's like fully clothed and like it's supposed to like come across as you know comedic and shtick but like you know and everyone like all the the writers are like yeah everything now looking back seems inappropriate and weird but it's like mm. And the two female writers, like I was going to definitely, talk about that? definitely, you know, were very well aware. But like, this is such a problem that still exists today of like women not being able to like stand up and advocate for themselves for fear of, you know, losing their position, their job, just like again, power imbalance all over the place. They were sharing a salary. Yeah, talk about the female writer's story. There's two female writers that were brought on at the beginning of all that, and he said, "But you're sharing salary," and. When they first started, you know, he would make really inappropriate jokes. He, at first, he would say, like, I don't think women are funny, like right out the gate, the first day they started. And he's like, do you mind if I call you the girls? And they were like, OK, like they, the whole time they were just always scared to speak up for themselves. And he would he would make like bets with them, say, like, I bet you can't eat two gallons of ice cream in 30 minutes. I'll give you 100 bucks if you can. And so she would. But then he wouldn't pay her and then would made another bet like, oh, like, I'll give you however much money if you can kill that fly. Like, oh, should I add it to your tab? And then pulls her aside and like yells at her and reprimands her. You know, and she's like, at one minute he's making, you know, this like really fun sort of like silly work environment. Next minute he's losing his shit. And it's just like creating that kind of really hostile environment, especially, you know, more geared and targeted towards the women that work there. Like they were in fear of him. And then when the other woman found out that it's actually not legal for them to be splitting salary and she calls the labor board or whatever it was the writers guild and um confirms that they you know find out that's what's been happening they contact him they tell them that you cannot be splitting salary like that he goes to her asks her she's conspiring against the company and if he finds out that it's her she will never work for nickelodeon or viacom like just completely threatens her apparently they were supposed to be available eight days a week 20 well and for their for her dream job she's threatening you know not only losing this but impacting the rest of her career which it did yeah the other girl got fired because she on her on the weekends when she wasn't even like at work but because she just well, you know, they're supposed to be on call, went to a concert, and then one night had friends over. She got fired for that. Like, I'm like, we're having a social life. So in the writer's room, they were talking about how they, they used instant messaging, and he would instant message random people and s- say a command, like, bark like a dog. Yeah. And he would make them do it. And one time, it was one of the gals, like, last straws, he told her, get up and pretend that someone is bending you over your desk. Oh, she was talking, she was telling a story about something in high school because they were talk. it was, you know, they were writing about high school stories. So she was telling the story and he's like, you should tell that as if you're being sodomized. And the one woman, the other writer, female writer felt really uncomfortable, but she didn't want to 
she said she was like tearing up when she was talking to the other one and was like yeah. that was one of the worst and the girl that it happened to excuse me the woman did mm-hmm. not want to discuss it which i totally understand but the other woman was like to this day that is the worst thing i have ever seen in a professional environment and like yeah that was the 90s like it's still even with me too i was at a previous sales job that I was at for four years, I was sexually harassed constantly. I was groped. I was told not to go in certain rooms with certain doctors, not to be left alone with them, all kinds of things. And then in Me Too happened right after I left that job. And I realized like I'd gone to a boss a really long time ago and had told them this has been going on. Mm -hmm. And he told me that I'm a good looking girl and that's part of the job. And he was like, so if you want to be because it was really male dominated, if you want to be in this job, then you have to play the game. And so that meant getting groped by old 70 year old surgeons and not being able to say anything. So back then, I can't imagine the 90s way before me too. Mm -hmm. It was just like, unimaginable. And yeah, also the Nickelodeon's logo was a foot, which I never realized how weird that was until this thing came out. We're like, why was it a foot? Because they had a bunch of weird feet content. He was obsessed with feet. All of the the weird jokes and innuendos went completely missed. And when network would have to like sign off on things they would straight up ask like is this what i think it means they'd be like no they'd be like okay the power that he had over everyone just to get these things to the screens it was just insane the harvey wine scene of it all he still has not been held accountable i just saw something he i was gonna say where is this man at this man is doing fine i'm pretty sure he's still working he did an interview my Uh friend said to me i i listened to 30 seconds of it and i was like no the victims have the voice here i don't care about your bunk apology he basically was like, sorry, didn't know better. And it was just like, why didn't you know better? Even if it was the 90s, I don't care. As a human person, you knew the power you had. You liked to leverage it. You got off on the way that you were able to influence and scare people. And you also very allegedly assaulted kids. So like, no, no. Why did you have to learn that? You were a grown man. Yeah. Scary. Very scary. Very basement Yeah. Basement behavior. Who is in your basement this week? Okay. In my basement is LAX Airport. Um, I mean, okay, LAX is always a fucking nightmare. But um, this particular week, it was really quite the hellscape. I was supposed to leave on Sunday to go to New York. I get there. You know, there's not a lot of traffic on Sunday, so it really shouldn't have taken. I checked traffic. I got picked up around 930. Get to like, you know, half a mile outside the airport around like 10, 15 ish. Mons Sepulveda, and it's just gridlocked. And we're there for like 20 minutes. Finally, we're able to get to a point where we can like detour, get away. It's just like there's no getting into the airport at this point. There's people like starting to walk. It's straight up like walking dead the way that like crowds are just like <laughs> starting to walk there. And so we're just trying to figure out how to get in there. It's like a good over an hour that we're trying to do this. And I mean, at some point, it's like, yeah, I could have walked, but like, I don't really know what's going on. I don't know if it's eventually it's just going to like free up. It's hard to tell. So I basically miss my flight and the driver who definitely makes more than one trip to the airport probably in a day. He's like, I've never seen this. They've been working on LAX for a long time, which is why it's such a mess all the time. But they were doing overnight work somewhere. So they closed down the entire like three lanes that go to Century Boulevard, as well as some of the other lanes within the terminals. So it just was causing complete utter chaos. It's like, get your shit together. LAX like this is it's I just think that's completely unacceptable when you say it's going to be from 12 a.m to 7 a.m and it's now 10 a.m and they're like oh um expect delays plan ahead come early it's like that should have at 10 a.m it's too late (laughs) it's too late for that I'm really sorry that happened to you but it did bode well for me yeah because we gotta you know watch our movies that was when the (laughs) cinematic masterpiece happened so yeah it was in your basement you know what I've decided well there's no statute of limitations in the basement so anyone at any time, you oh. can even from the past, you can go. Yeah, in the basement. of course. My basement this week is someone named Shane Byrne. He's Shane Byrne. a race car driver of some kind. I saw a video. I at first I thought it was recent, so I just immediately was like, "Oh, you were in my basement this week." But it was from 2013. Okay. He's like celebrating after they won something. He shakes up a bottle of champagne. There's a girl sitting next to him with a skirt on, and she has a motorcycle helmet on. He takes the bottle of champagne, shaken up, and squirts it under her dress between her legs, takes out the rest, and pours it on her. And is laughing. I'm sorry, I get shaking up champagne, but going like this, like, for everyone, the audacity of this man to think that was okay. What a pig. 
He did not even acknowledge it or apologize about it until 2021 when the video resurfaced. So people were like looking at it from different perspectives. What was she like? What was she doing? Oh, she just stood there. I mean, you're horrified. I yeah, mean, but I mean, I don't like. Uh, I would be smacking the shit oh, out of her. Yeah, <laughs> I you mean, and I. I was just curious if she was like how she was like reacting. If she, I mean, or I would just freeze. Oh, 20. <laughs> you would. No, I am confident that 2013 version of either of us would still beat the shit out of him. I'm I'm confident 1995 version of either one of us would have beat the shit out of him. So to each other. And also, that's not her fault. Yeah, I'm sure she was just like, again, power imbalance. She was obviously just someone who was on the state. I don't know. It was horrifying to watch. If that's what he does in public, imagine what he does in private. Anyway, that's the basement. To just bring levity to this after all that, let's do hometown hero. I need it. Great. I need it, too. Inessa says, I love the segment on the pod and I wanted to tell you guys a terrible dating story and I'll try and keep it short and sweet. So I went out with this guy. He picked me up. We went to high school together. I'd always had a crush on him. He's tall, tattoos and everything. He said he's going to take me out to dinner, but we have to do something first. Well, the thing that he had to do first was go to a funeral for one of the kids we went to high school with, but had graduated like five years earlier. We went to the same high school, so he's at the funeral and he's hysterically crying, like Kim Kardashian ugly crying. And I'm like, what do I do? This is the first date. So I went outside to smoke a cigarette and some old classmates came up to me and they're like, hey, what's going on with this guy? He didn't know him very well. Why is he crying like that? And I'm like, I'm not sure this is our first date. So we're leaving and he's like, where do you want to go out to eat? And I was like, oh, I'm not sure. He pulls out coupons from the newspaper of all the fast food restaurants. I was like, OK, well, I guess we'll go to Burger King because it was either Burger King or Arby's and some other place. We were also supposed to go to the movies. And when we get there, his card declines. So I have to pay. Burger King must have broken the bank. So after that nightmare of a date, I block him. Don't talk to him for six months until he contacted me because he wrote me down as his emergency contact and was in the hospital. What? <laughs> that wasn't super short, but that was awful. Imagine if someone says, hey, we need to run an errand on a date and it's a funeral. And he's sobbing. And then you're like, okay, that, well, now that's over. Like, where are we going to go eat? And he pulls out coupons. Burger King. Or Arby's. I love Burger King. They have those little Hershey's pies. Do you ever have one? Yeah. Listen, not, in this, listen. not in this scenario, though. That's psychotic. And then let's go catch a flick and like dudes fucking. Card decline? Why was he? Why are you his emergency contact? Why are you his emergency contact? That is literally <laughs> like, okay. Not, I know I always fucking quote the office, but it's like when Dwight is mad at Michael and he's like, can you remove him as my emergency contact? And they're like, what do you want to put instead? And he's like, put the hospital phone number 911 and walks out. I'm like, what? I feel like that's a dream. You know, when you have a dream, you're like, no way. That's such a good, that was such a good, you are a hometown hero. Good for you for surviving that. Wow. Holy shit. Okay. Well, anyways. Okay. Taylor says, ladies, love your pod. This story is 100% real. This is when I was about 21. I started dating this guy at work. It was new and fun, but I had never been to his house. I found out he lived with his grandma, which we were pretty young, so whatevs. And honestly, their relationship was so cute. But his dad also lived there, which would have been fine. But then I found out they fucking hate each other. Like, <laughs> full on hate one another. <laughs> they had had a screaming match while I was there spending the night. Anyways, the next morning, he gets he gets up to go to work and gives me a kiss and says, stay as long as you want, baby. I'm like, yeah, and fall asleep for another hour. When I wake up, I have to pee. And so remembering where the bathroom was, I fast walked it to the bathroom. I open up the door and there is his father completely naked, reading the newspaper and smoking a cigarette. <laughs> All of this while taking the smelliest shit I ever smelled. I screamed a very loud, I'm sorry, and ran. I ran back to the bedroom and proceeded to hide under my boyfriend's bed for the next four hours. I panicked. He came out of the bathroom and they were looking for me. After the four hours, I was like, okay, I have to go. So I worked with the courage, opened his door and fucking ran to the front door. His dad and grandmother sitting on the couch yelling, hey, at me once they spotted i ripped open the door and said nothing ran to my car and drove home it was no music drive home oh those drive homes are you just have to sit with those thoughts it's like in bridesmaids when they're like coming home and she's sh shitting in the street and they're just like excuse me also i have such a small bladder and have to pee all the time so what did you do did you hold it for four hours what did you do i would have peed on his floor and just like put a t-shirt <laughs> over like i'm sorry newspaper over it <laughs> like in big daddy 
I'm yeah. Going number two with the door open. <gasps> what like? Did you just never talk to him again? That guy's name was my ex boyfriend. That is my ex boyfriend. We're <laughs> we're done here. Like, did you? Was this pre cell phones? I've seen your dad what? take a shit. It's my future father in law. I don't think so. Was there not a window? Well, based on the scripters. Oh. I mean, I would have oh. been planning escape routes. Four hours? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I would rather watch Glitter twice. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather have Dice seduce me with his xylophone. Please keep these coming in. These are so goddamn funny. Oh, my God. Okay. Love it. Okay. Let's do WWDD. All right. So Caroline says, am I fucked up for being annoyed at my boyfriend's close relationship with his parents? My boyfriend, 24 years old, speaks to his parents often, always goes to them for advice, sometimes over me, and shares a lot about our life to them. Like they know what he got me for Valentine's Day, which I thought was weird as hell. Is this valid ick to have, or do I just not have the same relationship with my parents? Love you guys so much. Obsessed with pot. Um, I'm going to touch your hand when I say this, because <laughs> we love you too. No, girl. I think that you're blowing this a little out of proportion. Who doesn't want someone who's close with their parents? I would say it'd be one thing if like the Valentine's Day gift isn't really registering for me because of course you're like, that's not a, such a casual thing to mention unless it was like intimates. So I guess we need more information. If it was like a vibrator, then yeah, that'd if be weird. Like but if it's just like- Flowers in a box of chocolate, like maybe he was just really excited and w that wanted to like tell people what he got for you. Yeah, if it's not about your box of chocolates, I don't know <laughs> what the deal with that would be. So don't you think, I think that's great. He has a close relationship. Yeah, no, I think, is it is it something where it's like he has to call them and ask for like advice and permission and get their validation for every single, like I would want to know like, is it one of those things where it's like, do you have to call your mom every, you know, it's one of those things. Like, is it like he's just kind of not grown up and out of certain things or is it just genuinely like they're like really tight knit and he likes to like keep in the loop on things and they just have that kind of relationship. I understand like for some people that don't have that, it can feel like a little bit much but you know i know i've known people that's like they're just really codependent i think those things and it can be like a little weird where it's like mm, it's giving issues but i would just assume that like maybe it's just you're just different in that aspect well and he's 24 that's yeah. so young and i mean like that's another thing yeah. so i'm guessing you're not you guys are probably around the same age Maybe his parents, I mean, they've been on earth longer. So just in general, like I'm 33 and I still look for a parent to like mm -hmm. help me if I need help. So I think maybe chillax a little bit. Yeah. 100%. Love you. Rachel says, keeping it short and sweet. How can you tell the difference between intrusive thoughts and intuition? Example, I always get scared my boyfriend of six years is cheating on me, but he has never done anything to make me think it could be true. He's legit perfect. Any ideas? Thanks for taking time to read. I really appreciate the girlhood and love that you guys are doing this. Please never stop. Devoted fan from Vermont who still wears SPF every day. Shout out to episode one. We have a day one listener. Yay. Rachel, you little angel. I would say mm. this is a really fine line because we do need to trust our intuition. But I think and maybe I'm projecting we can be our own worst enemy with creating narratives. So in general, I think if where there's smoke, there's fire like. So if there are things, then maybe be evaluating. But look, men are, ugh, a lot of men are trash. So it's also, yeah, it, could that be a thing? Sure. But something I always tell myself, this is how I got over my fear of flying. Don't live it twice. If he is, that would be terrible. But you're already living in that. Don't live it twice. Like j until there's a reason to be worried, then I would say don't worry. If he's legit perfect and never given you any indication or reason, don't self-sabotage. Truly. And I, I know that sometimes like when you see other people do it, you're like, whoa, that could happen to me. True. But like also, no, I think sometimes like there's that like sort of confirmation bias where you're just like wanting it to happen or maybe I don't know. I don't know where it comes from, but like try to just not let it get the best of you. And I do think you can tell the difference between intuition and intrusive thoughts. I, I can for me like intuition is in your bones where you know when your brain is bothering you and it gives you an anxious feeling. Like I feel like intuition mm -hmm. more so gives you the urge to take action or look into something further well as intrusive thoughts just feel awful. Yeah, 100%. That's what I say. Yeah, as intuition is guttural. Intrusive is like straight up like the Lulu. <laughs> Rachel says, 
Love everything about this podcast as I am 38 and just out of a six-year relationship because I caught him cheating with a neighbor. Ooh. How he met her, you ask? Craigslist. <laughs> I'll never ever fully know the full details and I think I'm okay with that now. As this went down in October and I have an awesome new place as well as a new job, I'm feeling hopeful. But basically, I joined Hinge to put myself out there again. Match with a guy that looks like a goofy scientist. He's a dad of two. I'm unbothered. Meet him for coffee and we both address that we are somewhat fresh out of a relationship. Him, a marriage. Bring up the Craigslist lady from my ex and then he replies with, I can still relate. I also had a prostitute addiction and that's why my marriage ended. I'm like, uh, thanks for the honesty, but that's not relating to me. Like, go take my ex out for coffee. But also, like, who uses Craigslist to get girls in 2024? The thing is, <laughs> I literally am concerned that we went out with the same person. I wonder where this person lives. I once had a first date. This man was 6'7". He's a very specific man. So, Rachel, if you're listening, I wonder mm -hmm. if it was the same person. Did he look like a goofy scientist and have two kids? He did have two kids. And if, I, I don't know if goofy scientist, but he, but he was fucking tall. He told me on our first date, my marriage broke up because of a prostitute addiction that I've had since college and here's the thing no not shaming anyone i totally get it if it's something you feel mm -hmm. like you need help with i'm definitely not shaming sex workers but that is such a crazy thing to tell someone on your first date you admitted you cheated on your wife with sex workers and are we're trying to build some kind of thing so just a sidebar that's that's a little too much information perhaps should be reeling in in a little bit and any sort of like follow-up of like but i don't have that problem anymore or like so like where are you at with it problem now sir like you're fresh out of both fresh out of something him a marriage failed because of his addiction to prostitutes so like still a thing yeah that's that's dark stuff i would say maybe keep looking here's the thing i mean i think there's not really a specific question but i think what you're asking in general is like how to move through that and i think it just takes time yeah that's everyone's been disappointed once you're hurt like especially because you just sort of went through something pretty traumatic with cheating i don't think this is relationship or person you want to uh, invest any time in because I don't think you'll be able to trust them. Yeah. Like too much Craigslist. Craigslist. I think you, you want to. The best prediction of future behaviors or past behaviors. And that's not that's not 100 percent of the time true. But yeah, I think maybe not this person, but also maybe you need a little more time Heal. to have like such a big trigger. So, yeah, I mean, I think what I mean, sounds like she's saying like, you know, I, I feel good. I got my own place. I'm OK with it. I've come to peace with it. But I still think this might trigger some some of that past stuff. I think you gotta. I would love to see your face when he told you because of mine. I was like looking like Katie if someone faints. <laughs> yeah. Madison says, hey, ladies, I got out of a long term relationship a little over a year ago and I thought I was finally starting to get over it. And then I saw my ex with another girl on a St. Patrick's Day block party. It reopened old wounds and now I can't stop thinking about it. The image of him with this girl is constantly replaying in my head and I can't distract myself long enough to stop thinking about it really taking a toll on me what can i do any advice appreciated uh, just remember why you broke up make a list immediately of all the things that you hated about them and every time your mind wanders you need to read that list and remember that's her problem now correct also i totally understand this there's just something even if you wanted to break up even if they were horrible to you when you actually physically see them with another person oh. that, that's hard so of also course. please keep in mind this will get better in general, you're going to wake up one day and it will be out of your brain, but like it's OK and that's totally normal. No, I, I don't want to bypass the feelings that that, you know, that that brings on to a person because it it sucks. Obviously, one day you're not going to feel those feelings. So just like that's a really like soothing, uh, comforting thought to have to remind yourself of. But yeah, truthfully, just remember that all the reasons why you broke up and, you know, unless that person has made vast improvements in their life. That person's going to deal with all that same bullshit. He probably Time ain't shit. Time to upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> probably ain't shit. Yeah. We did it. Um, just one minor note. Thank you guys for keeping all the WWDs coming in. Um, continue to keep them nice and short and sweet and concise. We are more likely to pick them. It's just, yeah. it's easier. Um, and yeah, keep the stories coming in. Hometown Heroes. Disrespectfullypod at gmail.com. Thank you. Do you feel clear? I feel clear. I feel clear. Great. <laughs> Love you so much. Love See you. you next week. See you. Babe, you're going to see the power of women. Like, disrespectfully. disrespectfully.